Welcome to the home of Opel in Rüsselsheim. And although Adam Opel wasn't around to see his company turn into an automobile company, this leg of the business as Opel as a car manufacturer is 125 years old this year. Started out as a sewing machine company and then went on to produce penny farthings. Obviously these days Opel is owned by the massive Stellantis group sharing platforms with Peugeot and Alfa Romeo and Citroen. But we're here in Germany to remind everyone of the German heritage of this famous brand. So this is the brand new Grandland. It's been around since 2017. And this one is now bigger than ever. And it goes without saying, you can get it in a mild hybrid, soon in 2025, a plug-in hybrid and a full battery electric vehicle version. So the mild hybrid is a 1.23 cylinder. The plug-in hybrid will be a 1.6. And it's quite a bit longer, not quite as long as the new Skoda Kodiak, but still uh, quite a bit longer, four inches than the previous version, bit more wheelbase room as well. So for passengers in the rear, uh, they've also managed to stretch the car, but not make it too much taller than the last version. And that's something you notice when you look at the car. It has, I don't wanna say a coupe look about it, it is a CSUV, but it's not as tall as you might expect some of its competitors to be. If you know Matrix headlights and how they operate, think slightly more advanced in these cars. There's over 50,000 pixels in the headlight unit of this front visor on the Grandland. It's an incredible amount of illumination. And we were shown a display today on how the lights work. So even if you're driving towards a vehicle, coming at you on a really dark road, the spread, much like Matrix headlights, will flood the outer width of the car, but still won't dazzle the driver in front. And this does an even better job at doing that. And when you walk up to the car and open it, you get all these triangles that make you think of Toblerone, uh, and just will kind of dance. And it's a very impressive way of looking at the vehicle. It's also the first time the Opel badge has been illuminated. So that's, you know, a glaringly obvious advancement. Still have that split down the bonnet. Opel are famous for it at this stage. This impact copper color, which is really quite special, uh, not a million miles away from the launch color from the Nissan Aria a couple of years ago. So if you've seen that in the flesh, that should give you an idea of what it's like. And then we have black uh, high gloss below. There's no chrome now on the Grandland either. You can get 18 inch wheels if you ask for them, but the standard wheel size is actually 19. And they've managed to work it out that it doesn't push it into the higher V or T band. You can get 20s. I'm not sure if they will come with aero covers. Sometimes you can spec them with the arrows, take them off afterwards and the VRT isn't impacted, but it's worth having a look. Uh, again, the black over the roof, so certain trims will get two-tone. No roof rails on this. Fuel or charging ports will be on this side and we'll cover all the charging specs a little bit later on in the video. The boot is also a very impressive piece of kit, if you want to call it that. But before we get to what you can stick in the back of it, let's just discuss the rear of the car. So Grandland is etched into the bodywork. Now the Opel, or you can fit Vauxhall here if you're watching this in the UK, that will fit right into this light bar. It looks very nice. A wiper, of course, a tail light up here, and quite a large spoiler that comes out. So uh, not unlike many other cars in this segment, and a couple of kinks and twists in the bodywork that are reminiscent of the Opel Coupe concept that we were displayed today. Some trims will get electric boots. This is obviously a manual, 550 litres in the boot, which is impressive. We have a floor here that has additional storage. There's a small groove, what could look like it's for a spare wheel, but not here. Obviously you'll be able to fit your charging cables down here. There's a 12 volt shopping hooks and this little contraption on either side that helps with holding this up like this. So nice little simple touches. Uh, here's a fun fact if you want to call it that. Uh, the boot, when you drop it like this, you get a bit more space, but it's also over a meter wide. It's 1.03. And Opel told us today that means you can get a new washing machine into the Grandland and you don't have to drop the rear seats. I don't know how often you get a washing machine, but it's handy to know.
there is a little bit more space now for your rear passengers and you might be thinking well with all this extra leg room would they not have made a seven seater Grandland? No is the answer but there is a seven seater coming in the Opel Frontera. They're bringing that back. Now because this was designed with the SCLA platform it's always had electrification fully electrified in its DNA so the floor is totally flat and that will also add to space compared to previous versions of the car. Armrests has a little bit of a tablet holder, a phone holder here. Can't be angled away, but at least it's there because it kind of bugs me when family see SUVs don't have things to keep kids happy in the back. It makes everybody's life easier. There's 500 kilos worth of recycling gone into this vehicle, which is a good thing because the battery electric version weighs over 500 kilos more than the mild hybrid. Two air vents reaching the back passengers, two USB-C charging ports. There's a 12 volt down there as well. Not a huge amount of storage going on in this part. There's pockets on the back of the seats and you can fit your feet under the front passenger and driver seats. Uh, you, think, you take these things for granted, but sometimes cars don't have this. And again, it's just nice to see it. They've thought of things. And if you have teenagers, will they fit? And on the top of the seats there's also an additional pocket so you could store a device and maybe if the screen popped up you could actually use that as a device holder but it, it might fall out but anyway it's, it's good to have it as an option maybe just to keep things away and tidy in the back of your car. Opel have deliberately created a less distracting interior for the driver they've called it a detox screen. What does that mean? Well you can reduce the display automatically or you can manually select which way you want it to work so when you're driving you can just maybe have the speed on in the car uh, there's also widgets for the passengers now hands up if you've ever had car play on in your car for example and someone wants to change something or change a song and your nav screen disappears and you miss a turn it's happened to me uh, with this widget the passenger can operate climate and songs and everything else here and it doesn't interfere with this display which as you can see also has a 360 overview camera uh, there's three different trims you've got to check which one you have which will have the overview or not uh, you obviously have your car player android you have your own uh, native nav built into the car and it's not the tallest of screens so again people that are sick of huge big tablets it's wide but not necessarily tall so you kind of actually find yourself driving you're looking down to it perhaps maybe more than a, a more upright tablet but maybe that's a nice thing to have. And also they have retained physical buttons. Again, that kind of stuff drives certain people mad. You get an additional strip for your driver and the instruments here. Uh, this little top looks like it's kind of stuck onto the wheel. Uh, the buttons kind of protrude out towards you as a driver and it's then curved off here. So it's a nice different steering wheel. Again, you could almost say the, the strip from the center bonnet features as part of this. Uh, physical controls and shortcut buttons it, it's all kind of due to just made, made to work uh, same with under here loads of storage space all the Solantis models do generally have great uh, arm storage under here uh, these little dividers can be pinched and moved so you can hold things you can put it just as a drinks holder you can essentially have three different zones if you move them apart a little bit uh, and there's three different drive modes which give you varying levels of horsepower. I'll tell you about that when we're driving. This is a pixel box, so you open it and your devices and everything are tucked away here. There's a wireless charger, two USB-Cs, and it all is just very, very functional. Good space in the door bins for drinks. And from the mid-spec open Ireland, you get AGR seats as standard, which is basically a collection of German doctors who have said, that seat is comfortable enough to get the title. So if you have back issues, worth getting the mid-spec up. So it's a very functional, it's nicely angled towards the driver and it's perhaps less annoying than some other models in terms of just where is that button for that? It's all in front of you. I'm actually gonna do two driving impression videos within this video. I'm gonna drive the battery electric vehicle in a moment there is the 1.6 hybrid coming next year but this is the 48 volt mild hybrid the way they describe it so you don't charge it but up to 130 kilometers an hour this car can be in battery motor mode you have a lithium ion battery a belt driven starter an e-motor and then a dct transmission 
on the PHV and the mild hybrid six and seven speed DCT dual clutch transmission gearbox. Gear changes are very quick. You don't notice them. It's just it's doing its thing in the background. And in this hybrid version, you get an indicator as to how topped up the smaller battery is to keep the car in EV mode. So it's there in front of you at all times, if you like. It should be good for about 5.5 liters per 100 kilometers, which is in and around industry standard for a hybrid vehicle that you don't have to charge. And Opel say approximately 50% of your driving should be in pure EV. And this 1.2 three cylinder, 136 brake horsepower version is actually pretty quiet. There's nice insulation in the car. You can get laminated glass in some versions. And overall, it's very pleasant. The damping is really good, even on these 19 inch alloys. And you can get 18 as part of an accessories pack, whatever that's about. It's unusual uh, on a family car not to be able to just say, yeah, there's 18 inches, which there are, but you've, you've got to request it. it. Seems a bit mad. But anyway, it's coping very well on these 19 inch. Opel have been a pains today to talk about how the Autobahn is part of this car's DNA and it's Autobahn proof. Not something we're going to deal with at home, of course, but on the battery electric vehicle version, it'll do up to 170 kilometers an hour on the Autobahn. SE, Elegance and GS are the trim options in Ireland. 49.95 for the entry, 42.995 for the mid-spec, that'll get you things like heated seats and heated steering wheel, and then 44,995 for the top-spec GS version. I have tried and tried to get out of Opel. Will the battery full electric version of the car be in and around those prices? Will they be the same price? I don't get the sense they will. I think we'll know soon, and they're obviously gonna try their best to make sure the walk to a full electric version shouldn't be a huge jump over internal combustion. Otherwise, some would say, what's the point? The plug-in hybrid version coming next year will have 195 brake horsepower, so a jump of about 60, and then the top output of the electric is 213. 10.2 meter turning circle in the new Grand Land, which for a vehicle that is bigger than the last version is nice for a maneuverability point of view. Very, very smooth. It's very refined. I've driven it on the Autobahn today. It was stable at higher speeds. And it just has all the characteristics that you want a family SUV to have. Um, body roll is definitely a thing, but cornering in a car like this is not your priority. While this version has discs all around. The brakes on the BEV version are so much bigger because it's got to cope with extra power and over 500 kilos extra. They almost look like they're performance brakes. The discs, particularly on the rear of the BEV Grandland, are massive. On that note, let's now jump in to the fully electric, slightly more powerful and slightly more expensive, soon to be confirmed, battery electric version. 160, 180, and 213 brake horsepower are the three different power outputs. So in Eco, it's the smallest, and in Sport, it's the highest. If you want to turn off the ADAS sensors for speed signs, there's a couple of ways you can do it. You can hold down the image of a car for five seconds, or you can also go into your favorites and save it in the shortcuts there and once you save the excessive speed tab that's it done forever now you'll have to hold it down to activate your shortcut every time you get into the car but you don't want to go into the settings every time you get into the car which is handy the steering in this actually is sharper but the weight the body roll is noticeably different and while the other versions get a torsion this gets a multi-link suspension set up on the rear to cope with the extra weight of the motor. Now driving them back to back, going over a little bit of an imperfection in the road here or there, you do notice the extra weight playing its part. You can't stick over 500 kilos extra into a car and not notice it. It's like, come on. 
uh, but it still maintains the smooth characteristics of the car it's just the changes there in a road surface the thud was more pronounced the brakes are there's a little bit more give at the start again as to be expected but there's a bigger bite when you reach the bite point because the brakes of the discs are much much bigger on this version in and around 19 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers right now temperature wise it's okay uh, what I will say is other people have been driving this car it's probably not reflective of normal driving but that is a little bit on, on the high side especially compared to the hybrid but obviously you can charge this car at home for significantly less and actually if you are in the space of buying EV I'm currently in the process of getting solar installed in my house I have an electric car in my family so I'll be able to over the next few months give you an idea of how little it will cost you to charge a fully electric car if you have the option to get solar and you have the option of having a charger at home. I can't say the extra power in this car is all that evident because of the extra weight. That three cylinder 1.2 engine is actually a really nippy little thing and it's quite refined. It doesn't really make itself heard in the cabin and it never on today's drive sounded strained to me at all. All of these cars will have chat GPT as standard. Also, there's with the really fancy 50 odd thousand pixel light system, uh, they've made some tweaks that will stop the glare coming back at you at nighttime from road signs, those huge motorway signs that sometimes almost blind you back. Another cool feature, the head up display works with polarized glasses. A lot of head up displays don't into a corner now and again the weight is really really presenting its, itself uh, so maybe there's no surprise there the much lighter uh, internal combustion version of the Grand Land is the better car of the two to drive if on the other hand the whole point of you getting an electric car and looking at a car that has a, an electric powertrain option is to charge it really cheaply make the decision to have an electric car over something that's still emitting exhaust fumes that's a different matter and the other aspect that's at play is the price of which for the electric version we just don't know yet right now as soon as i get them i'll update the details in the description details down below some detail then on the BEV version, 73 kilowatt hour and 82 kilowatt hour, 12 module battery. Remember you can replace modules, not the whole battery, should you have issues with the car. The smaller battery actually gets slightly faster charging, 160 kilowatt versus 150 kilowatt. And it's the first Opel to get some ACC batteries, which have been manufactured in Europe. The BEV version will tow 1200 kilos braked and the mild hybrid is 1100. Well then, Kia Sportage and Nissan Qashqai customers, what do you think of the Opel Grandland? It's fair to say that it's a brand that needs and is now getting a bit of loving from Stellantis. Certainly under GM up to 2017, the last few years it felt like they didn't really know what to do with Opel. Certainly Stellantis are well aware of what they need to do. Look what they've done with Peugeot over the last few years. So, it's a car full of innovation, technology, cleverness for families, good range, good mix of powertrains. I mean, it looks reasonably good. Will you ever make a CSUV car look wow for this budget? But you have to sample this car. You have to sample the Grand Land and Opel product. They're using hashtag go grand. I think hashtag be grand would have been more suitable for the Irish market. But that's the question. Opel need to make Opel sexy again. And have they made the Grand Land sexy enough? They've certainly made it good enough. So let me know, would it get you back into an Opel showroom or maybe into one for the first time? Thanks very much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.